Hello, in this video I show you how I build a new electronic fan system for an old blacksmith's coal forge. Along the way you will not only see interesting metalworking, but I will also take a closer look inside various fans, explaining the difference between DC motors and so-called brushless DC motors, take a look at their control circuitry, show you methods of how to build a PWM generator and much more. But first let me tell you how this curious project came into being. I recently made the decision to change my priorities and put more time into video production because I believe that this channel can have a great future. As a first step I decided to gear up by finally extending my workshop to the vacant basement rooms which I had freed from a ton of garbage a couple of months ago, as you can see in my video about my horror basement. In that video I had said that I intended to establish a workshop for metalworking down there. To make that possible I drove to my father's workshop last week, where some of my stuff has been lying idle for many years. What you see here in the back of my car may just look like a bunch of scrap, but wait and see what treasures were lying under the dust there. And like all those months ago, I descend down into the old basement. On the left hand side you see an anvil. It is still in very good shape and its size is perfect for me. If it was any bigger I could not have carried it down here or by myself. On the right hand side you see a flue and in the middle the coal forge itself. I also brought some blacksmith's tongues, hammers and dies. The large bottles you can see in the background are balloon flasks which you use to produce wine at home and I will show you how that is done in another video. But for now let's take a closer look at the forge. Now what is this strange thing supposed to do anyways? Well to explain this I prepared a drawing of the inside of this assembly. At the top you find a so called fire pot which is made of very heat resistant cast iron. When working with the forge it normally holds a pile of incinerated blacksmith coal. To generate high enough temperatures though air needs to be blown into the coal pile. For that reason there is a hole in the bottom of the fire pot through which that air can enter. To regulate the air stream coming inside a movable cast iron rod can be used to decrease or increase the size of the hole. That is done by moving the metal lever you can see in the picture. But where does that air come from? Well in this picture you see a small connector which I added to the forge a couple of years ago. I used it to attach a large compressor to the forge. But since I have no reliable high volume compressor in my workshop yet, I will have to find another source of air. In its original state the air supply was delivered by a large centrifugal fan. The airflow could additionally be controlled by a simple piece of metal sheet that acted as a kind of primitive valve or shutter. The original fan was powered by a three phase induction motor. That motor however was damaged years ago and that was beyond repair. I informed myself about buying a new unit, but a fan of this size cost several hundred euros. Therefore I thought about building a completely new fan system while reusing the old steel pipe middle section which I still have here. Instead of a centrifugal or radial fan as they are also called, I will use an axial fan as you know them from PCs or server cooling systems. Since I will be able to regulate the airflow electronically, the valve can then be deleted entirely. The first thing to do then was to pick a fan that would be powerful enough to do the job. I have literally hundreds of fans lying around, but the one suited best is this one. It is a NIDAC TA500DC, of which I salvaged several units from a compact server several years ago. It might look similar to a normal PC fan. But as you can see it is much more powerful. The next issue was to build a reduction piece to mount the 120mm fan on the 16mm flange of the steel middle section. For that I first built a model for such a reduction piece from cardboard. After drawing it on paper I cut it out and glued it together. I 
I did this to test if the airflow coming out of the 60mm end would be sufficient for the task. As you can see, it worked quite well. The next logical step was to build the actual reduction piece from metal parts. But since I had no steel sheets in the house and my welding equipment isn't suited for welding materials this thin, I decided to do it with 3mm aluminium sheets, nuts and bolts. First I drew the outlines of the necessary parts on the aluminium sheet and then cut them out with an angle grinder. With that being done, I bent them into shape and connected the four sides together with angled aluminium pieces and a lot of nuts and bolts. Of course, you could have done it with welding or riveting, but I simply lacked the proper equipment at this point in time. With the reduction piece nearly finished, I now had still to modify the steel middle section before joining the parts together. I had to remove the connector for the compressor Delete the old valve and close the remaining hole by welding a piece of steel over it. With all that done and after adding some more angled pieces to mount the reduction piece on the flange of the middle section, I had to seal the remaining air gaps with a special mounting adhesive. After attaching the fan to the reduction piece temporarily, I could now do a first test of the new system. All in all, this performance is already very satisfying. The system will work even better when the fan will be attached permanently, because I can then seal all the little openings through which some of the air is still escaping. But before that, I will build a circuit to control the speed of the fan and thus the amount of air being blown into the coal pile. So at this point all work that remains to be done is of electronic nature, while this video so far dealt only with metalworking. That's why I will make a cut at this point and will put all the other stuff in a second part to this video. I already finished the entire project, but I'm still working on extensive animations and drawings to explain the workings of the brushless DC motor. I spent three entire working days simply on reverse engineering the circuit of the fan used in this project. Though I don't know yet how hard the post-production of part 2 will be, I promise you that it will come online within this week. So I really hope that you liked this video and that you can't wait for part 2.